Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Colour with Claire. Today I'm reviewing 101 Textures in Coloured Pencil by Denise J. Howard. So it's a coloured pencil technique book and it shows you how to create 101 different types of texture with coloured pencil. So you can see from the front cover we've got thumbnails of some of the different things we're going to be taught inside the book. There's tree bark, pebbles, flowers, running water, uh, moss, fire, grass, all kinds of different things, 101 in total. And you can see from the back that every single thing we're taught in the book is done over four steps. So it's not going to be a long stream of um, steps. It's not 20 steps that you've got to follow to get things. It's everything's done in four steps. Now that does have its pros and cons, which I'll come into a bit later. So the book itself, I just measure it, is 24 by 16 yeah, around about 16 centimetres, so it's quite a small book, as you can see. It's a nice little portable size to take with you if you wanted to practice this on the train or anywhere that you're out and about. It's not a large book, so it's not too cumbersome. So we'll get into the book itself. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be showing you every single page because that would sort of give away the tips and tricks in the book. Um, but you can see here we've got a table of contents, and these are all the different things that you'll get to learn in this book. So hopefully, maybe I should zoom in just slightly so you can see all the contents properly. And if you want to pause the video at this stage so you can have a good look, then do that now. But we've got a few different categories. So it starts with how to use the book and the different tools and techniques that you'll be using. We've then got a section for people, animals and insects, fabrics and textiles, glass, stone, ceramics, wood and metal, food and beverages, and then nature. So the how to use this book in the getting started section, it gives you again a few thumbnails of things you're going to learn. It gives you the tools and materials that are best to use, um, sort of um, recommendations on papers and um, different graphites and things like that. Other things you'll need, like a kneaded rubber, poster putty, but basically if you've got a rubber, you know, you can do it. You don't need a whole lot of big, faffy artist materials. Now this book, which I really like, but I know that some people will not, is all done with Prismacolor Premier pencils. So every single tutorial, every single step-by-step -step she gives you, she lists the exact Prismacolor pencils that you need to use to follow along. Now, obviously that's brilliant for people like me who mainly use Prismacolors, but if you do use other brands of pencils, it is gonna be a bit difficult to get your head around. Um, I do do a Prismacolor to Polychromos conversion chart, so if you do use Polychromos, you can convert some of the colours using that chart. But as for other kind of pencil sets, you'll just have to sort of do your best by eye to figure out what colour it is and what shade it is you need to use. So she's telling you here about different blenders and solvents. We all know that my favourite solvent is this one here. It's the Spectrum Noir Blending Solution. She then talks about sharpeners and swatch charts and fixatives, quite a few different things that we already know about being colorists. Now this tells you how to hold the pencil in all different ways, flat, normal and vertical to get different results. Sharpness and pressure. So throughout the book, as well as listing all of the different uh, Prismacolor pencil na names, she also tells you what kind of pressure to use, which is really, really handy, because a lot of these technique books do not tell you how hard you're supposed to be pressing with the pencil, and that can really affect the work and the look of it. So you've got very sharp, sharp, somewhat dull, and dull. And then she shows you exactly what the pressures should look like. We've then got a bit of information about different strokes and different effects that you can create with colourless blenders and uh, layering your colours one on top of the other. There's then a bit about colour mixing, warm and cool colours and different values. And then we're into the main part of the book, which starts off with the people section. So you can see here, we've got a smooth skin and this one is actually five steps, but it's the only, it's the only one that is showing you how to do that. It's just to show you how to get a smooth skin on anywhere on the body, whether you're colouring legs, um, shoulders, face, anything like that. This is just how to show you how to get smooth skin. Now, for the rest of the tutorials, it's all done in four steps only. And I did mention earlier that um, this has pros and cons because four steps is obviously a really short amount of steps and it's going to be 
Um, it's not going to be too laborious and too long of a job to try and do these um, tutorials when you've only got four steps to follow. But the con to this is that some of the thumbnails are definitely, um, they definitely have a bit too much of a gap between them. So it's really difficult, say for this one here with the aged skin, this is just a cream layer of pencil and some uh, graphite pencil lines drawn in. So anyone can do that. Now the next step looks very, very far ahead from that. So, you know, I would have preferred really to have more steps in between each technique because um, it's just, it seems like a big leap to get from that to that. And even though she's telling you what pencils to use and the pressure to use, it's, unless you're a professional artist or you have a good knowledge of anatomy art, you know, you're that kind of minded person, I don't think you're gonna be able to get from that to that just as a person like me who doesn't have any kind of training or skill in that whatsoever. So I would have preferred more steps to be honest, but I can see why they've done it in the in the kind of very short, compact, concise four steps. Um, but still, I have tried five of the different techniques from this book, which I'll be showing you soon, and you can see what you think. So the first technique that um, I tried was the aged skin. And if I just get my... Here we go, this is the one that I did. So you can see if I put it next to the finished result here, it doesn't really look anything like um, the finished result in the book. Obviously she's much more talented and professional than me um, and you can really see the difference. Now if I take that one away, you know, you can maybe look at mine and think, you know, it's not too bad. If it was on a, on a whole face, it probably would look better than in a square. Um, but still, you know, I wasn't really impressed with how I managed to do that. And I, and I do think it needed more steps, that one, to be honest. So we've got straight hair, we've got curly hair, wavy hair, facial hair. And then we move on to the eye, which is another one that I did. And this one I am really, really pleased with. Look at that eye. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It took me about 45 minutes, though, to do that eye. Um, obviously, I've had to draw it myself. It's not an, an eye in a colouring book that's already got the line work down. But I am really, really pleased with how that turned out. Now, it's not exactly as good as um, Denise's. Let's see if I can get this to look together. But... I, re I really am pleased with how that's turned out and I think that the four steps was enough for that one. So I think it does depend on the tutorial that you're looking at, the specific one, whether the four steps is enough. So I'm going to go through these um, quite quickly, take you to the ones that I've actually done. Cat eye, cat hair, snake skin, leopard fur. So this is the next one that I did, which is this one here, leopard fur. And oh, even though, sorry, I'm fiddling, even though um, Denise's is definitely better, I don't know how I can get this on camera properly to show you, um, even though Denise's is definitely much better and much more realistic and that mine went a bit too dark, I think if you're just looking at mine on its own as it is, it's pretty decent for the first go, for fur, definitely. Um, the next one I did was so we've got we moved on to fabrics and textiles now was sequins now this one turned out horrendously now you can see this almost looks like that bokeh technique that is really elusive and it really scares me people keep asking me how do you do bokeh do a video on bokeh and i just i, I can't i've tried so many times and it just turns out rubbish and it did again on this so even though this is supposed to be shiny sequins and it looks absolutely fantastic on denise's um example this was my finished example <laughs> so you can see that there is plenty of difference between Denise's and mine um there's just no comparison really so again I would have liked more steps within that uh the next one that I did we've moved on to ceramics and metals now the next one I did was, I really like that rusted steel one by the way, that's absolutely gorgeous. So some of these you can use for your backgrounds in your colouring pages as well. So we've got wrought iron, wood, citrus fruit rind, pineapple grape, strawberry coconut, black coffee, baguette, chocolate and then we move on to nature. So we've got tree bark, pine needles, things like that. And the one that I did is this one here, the still lake and this is another one that I'm really pleased with. So. 
This is Denise's finished piece from the Still Lake and this is mine. And I think that even though obviously, again, I keep saying it, Denise's is obviously gonna be much better. I actually think that that turned out really, really well. Um, it did take, it, it did seem to take me more steps and a longer time to do it myself than is shown on here, um, just to get it looking like the thumbnail. So I would do what she said here, which for example is to add a second medium layer of colors, artichoke, marine green, cool gray. Um, so I would do that, but it wouldn't look like that. I'd have to do a little bit more work to get it looking as it does in the thumbnail, if that makes sense. But I do like the effect um, and how it's turned out. So there's a few more left in the nature bits. And then we move on to the artist gallery. So this is Denise's work. And you can see just how beautiful um, her finished pieces are and how talented she is, both on people and still life and nature and all sorts. And then there's a bit about Denise there as well. Um, she's actually got credits on the films Shrek and Ants. Yep, yeah, Ants. So she's like worked, you know, for all these massive companies on these huge, huge films. So she's definitely supremely talented and I think it would have been hard pressed for me not having any kind of experience in art or coloured pencil drawing to have matched up to her level but the book is really really good it does take you through everything step by step as I said I would have preferred if there were more steps but if you're looking to just keep practicing from a beginning level I mean, to say this that this was my first go at an eye, I think that's actually really good. So it's things like the eye, the leopard fur, the still lake, maybe even the aged skin if it was on a larger thing. That would be a testament, really, to how good the book is. We'll throw the sequins out. <laughs> that didn't turn out well at all. Um, but yes, I do think if you want to... If you want to kind of keep... Um, raising your skills raising the bar for yourself and learning more and more you can't really have too many of these kind of books you've got colorist special effects you've got color workshop by rachel reiner you've got um the jennifer zimmerman book i can't remember what it's called now secrets of coloring and there's plenty plenty of these books and i do think that every single different one has something different to offer so you know i would definitely recommend getting it there are pros and cons to it, but it's something that I definitely am glad that I've got on my shelf. So you can get this from Amazon, both the UK and the US. I'm not sure if it's on the Book Depot, but if it is, you'll see the link in the description below. So go there and get yourself a copy if you're interested. Any other questions or anything, let me know, and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.